it's the thing we most dream for. Hail to the altruistic revolution. Let's go for it. Now the first exercise is just gonna get us ready for the peak. That self-determination theory is really a, a body of work done by a whole community of people across the globe, and it's led to a lot of research and a lot of uh, evidence-based interventions in organizations and clinics and schools and in families, and I'm really happy to be a part of that, in, that movement uh, as it's occurred. And it's been disseminated in a lot of popular books uh, of recent times in many different fields. And, you know, clearly in this 15-minute uh, talk, I'm not going to be able to cover a lot of self-determination theory. And one of the things that I just wanted to say right from the outset is to give you an apology. You know, most people, when they think of uh, a motivation researcher is going to speak, they think about motivational speakers. They think, uh, <clears throat> I'm going to say something exciting, inspire you for the next few days. You'll sit on the edge of your seats. Maybe some of you could walk on some hot coals. Um, <laughs> but uh, this is more my style. Uh, I, I'm, a, I'm a numbers person, a scientist. I, I kind of care about what the truth is about uh, the various formulations we have about what brings us to happiness. And I also want to uncover the myths that we also have. And that brings me to the topic that I want to have in uh, uh, today's discussion, which is just about the connection between these two things, which is life goals and happiness. And we all have some life goals. Some of us uh, aspire to be rich and famous. Some of us aspire to be uh, uh, givers to our community. Uh, and one of the things that, uh, that we think very much in self-determination theory is not all life goals pay off with the promise uh, that's offered. So people pursue a lot of life goals, and in pursuing them, they don't get their basic psychological needs fulfilled. And the result of that is they don't get the happiness they hoped for. Whereas other life goals seem to have a greater payoff, now, this was Aristotle's position. It was really an empirical position, not a philosophical one. He was saying that the, f the full life, the happy life, would be one where people are pursuing virtues and, uh, and, and developing their potentialities to the fullest. But not all philosophers have agreed with him, and we have some modern philosophers who, who strongly disagreed. Here's, here's one of them. <laughs> uh, he's a very, very, very prolific uh, author and uh, has some, some amazing titles like, Have I Told You How Wealthy I Am? I I think, he, I think he has. I think he has. Uh, really, we have a lot of cultural messages that are in the same direction. We're told a lot that if we're, we're going to be happy, if we consume the right things, we have the right possessions, if we pursue successful careers, uh, these are going to be the roadways to uh, a good life. And we started this work just by going around uh, to all kinds of groups and asking people, what are your life goals? What are you aspiring to in this life? And uh, there were many different answers to that question, but we found that there were a couple of groups of life goals that kind of went together. And one was a group of goals we called extrinsic life goals. And these are things like making money, getting power, becoming popular or famous, um, uh, having the right image, being attractive in some ways. People who like one of these aspirations typically like the others. They kind of hang together strongly. And uh, another group that we found, though, were people who when they, you ask them what they wanted to do with their lives, they said, you know, I want loving relationships, or I want to really give to my community, or I want to keep growing and learning. And those things also tended to hang together, so people would tend to favor either intrinsic or extrinsic life goals. And then we would survey people after asking them about their life goals, about their mental health or their wellness. And we found pretty dramatic results, which is people who were focused on giving to their communities, on relationships, on personal growth, were happier people. They rated themselves as more self-actualized, as having more vitality. They had fewer symptoms of depression. And they had fewer physical complaints like headaches, stomach aches, back aches, uh, typical symptoms of stress. And the opposite was true, of course, for people who were emphasizing extrinsic life goals. They were showing more of these signs of depression, more of these symptoms of stress, and, uh, and, more, and less vitality and energy on a day-to-day -day basis. And we find the same pattern across all these different cultural groups. Those people who are favoring intrinsic goals in terms of what they're emphasizing as life goals, they turn out to be happier people with fewer uh, mental health uh, problems or uh, issues. So, some people questioned, maybe that's not about just the goals that you have, but it's about attainment. So, for instance, maybe it's just harder to get rich or it's harder to get famous. And if you got those things, of course you'd be happy. And here I've put up a few rich, famous people on this uh, slide here. And, and as we know, not all of them 
are happy people. Some of them might be. And actually what we found in our research is that in life, when people attain extrinsic goals, when they say, I've made that money, I've gotten that fame, uh, I've achieved those things that, uh, that uh, are part of that goal, it doesn't necessarily make them any happier unless they've also had high attainment in intrinsic goals, unless they've established loving families and they've given a lot back to their communities. But people who have given to their communities and people who have loving relationships, if they've attained those things, they're happy whether or not they have exceeded in the extrinsic sphere. So it turns out that success at the intrinsic goals of life is the necessary and sufficient condition for happiness. Now, we've done this, uh, studied this in lots of different ways, but I'll just tell you one more study we did, which was with university students after they graduated. Uh, so a year after they graduated, we followed these people and we asked them, now in your early career stage of life, what are you going after? What are your aspirations? And of course, we had groups who were uh, saying, I want to make money, become famous, get powerful. And we had groups who said, I want to give to my community. I want to form a, a loving family. And what was really interesting in this research is these people who had been able to graduate from universities pretty much got what they wished for. Over the next two years when we were following them, people who uh, wanted money made more money. People who wanted to get more power got more status. But people who wanted to give their, to their community also gave to their communities and formed more loving relationships. So both groups attained what they were after, but they had very different results in terms of happiness. So in terms of what the change from the baseline when we measured uh, these people, people who were pursuing intrinsic goals and attaining them were actually getting happier, they had more well-being, and they had fewer signs of ill-being over those two years of time. Whereas people who were pursuing extrinsic goals and attaining them, and actually succeeding at them, showed no increase in their happiness or their well-being, they, but they did show an increase in symptoms of depression, of anxiety, and other forms of ill-being. And so when we get to what you should do, I, I just want to, in my last couple minutes here, uh, emphasize a couple things. One is the intrinsic value of personal growth. When we think about that, we think about uh, pursuing the things that are re really meaningful, both in your vocations and your avocations, like the social advocacy lawyers, going for something that has a purpose. You always also, I think, it's looking for novelty and always wanting to learn. Uh, Auntie Rhonda, who I was in the green room in the back, she said, you know, take a new pathway every day. I really like that idea. That's, that's adding to personal growth. And when you do that personal growth, of course, it's adding to your basic psychological need satisfaction, and this will increase uh, your wellness overall. Secondly, relationships is another intrinsic goal, and you know, this is the most universally rated important goal uh, in all the cultures we study, and really, it's the most important contributor to overall life satisfaction. And I can't emphasize this enough, how strong the results are in all of our data for giving to your community and how it fosters well-being. We've done lots of studies of helping, lots of studies of contributing, and why it makes people happy or in what ways it does. And when you give to others, you're doing several things that satisfy what in SDT we call basic psychological needs. When you're giving to others and helping others, you can help, that helps you to feel effectiveness or competence in the world. It helps you connect with other people and feel that relatedness, and it also fulfills that sense of mission and value so important to our sense of autonomy. So this turns out to be a very important way uh, to happiness, so to speak, and uh, it's no wonder to us then that people like to do good, because when they do good, not because they're trying to do this, uh, but they also turn out to do well for themselves. So, you know, in summary, I just want to say that, you know, it's been a long debate, uh, thousands of years now, and, you know, we see that uh, when it comes down to the, the data anyway, some ancient ho truths are still holding true, which is it's the intrinsic goals that really matter. Thank you very much.